another stop here at Lahoma has been the soil samples. And Jason, what have you been talking to producers about? Oh, I've just been discussing the, the differences, in, differences in soil type and how both the landscape position and then the soil profile characteristics influence the productivity of soil and the erosivity and then the, the potential for improving the soil um, as a result of management. And again, how is that different across the landscape? And, and you have some really cool examples here. Th these have been taken at different elevations, correct? Yeah, different locations, different lo uh, elevations. These two, this one on the left and this one on the right came from here at La Homa. Mm -hmm. And this one on the left, it's an up, what we call an upland soil. So I took it at the top of the hill and it's got a nice uh, loamy material at the surface. And then as you increase in depth, it picks up clay content. And that's because clay is being washed over time through the s surface down into the subsoil. And then in some cases, you'll have the, the subsoils actually formed from like uh, the, the uh, clay rock and it ends up with a lot of clay. In contrast, this soil over here came from a lowland area near a creek. And this soil is, is material that's deposited over geologic time by that creek. And you can see that here in this, um, this layer of sand right there at about 18 inches. And in some soils, you'll actually find a buried surface like what we have over there on the table. And so the productivity is very much different between these two. Water and roots and air move very freely through this nice loamy material all the way down to four feet. In contrast, at the, surf or at the upland soil, you don't have as much water moving through it because it's at the top of the hill, for one thing. And then that water has much... Um, um, more trouble moving down because of this heavy clay. Well now the ones in the middle they came from Morrison just next do door to my house and this is what we call a Renfro clay loam mm -hmm. and so in the subsoil it's actually very very clay and you can tell on camera by how much it's cracked and what's really interesting is this soil that I'm pointing at it came from a sloping area this is native soil that's never been cultivated and, and it's currently under grass and then this is the same soil, but it's up on a flat area, actually up on top of the hill. And to here is from, from the surface down to where my finger is, is what we call topsoil. You can see how nice and dark it is. Right. And then here's about the bottom of the topsoil in this example. And so you can see in these flat areas, even on an upland where you have grass that's been there uh, for a long time, you'll accumulate all this nice dark material, it's nice and loamy and very productive, and then you put a slope on it, it, even the grass isn't quite as productive, so that dark organic matter layer doesn't penetrate as well. And then this one was down in a creek bottom, and although it's dark, it's pretty heavy clay even right. up to right here. And you actually have another another example over here at this table. Yeah, one, one last example that's really cool is, is this is an alluvial soil, again, taken next to the creek. And this is the actual surface, and it's a very beautiful silt loam soil, right. very productive. But what's really cool about it, and you, again, you see this, this, uh, this sand layer here, mm -hmm. and then when you move to the very bottom down here about four feet, it gets real dark. Mm -hmm. And that dark layer is an actual buried soil. So at one time or another, everything below my fingers was the surface of the, the earth and there was grassland growing on it and we can tell that by how dark it is and then the three feet of material above it um, was deposited over time from the creek bottom. Okay, thank you much Jason and for more information go to our website sunup.okstate.edu.